Thank you. And I uh, want to thank everyone for being here because it's an interesting topic. And I like how these guys are thinking about the event and kind of using terms like dangerous thoughts and thinking and those kinds of words, because I think what I'm going to present today, I, I think I almost need to apologize beforehand. So I uh, apologize if I do kind of piss anyone off for saying the wrong thing, but I'm just going to blurt out my genuine ramblings on, on the topic and, and please fire sort of questions later as well. Last thing I want to say is how good it is to um, get insights from OzPost. They're a brand that have been doing really interesting things for some time now. It's really great to see them sort of adopting some of these uh, methodologies. So thank you for speaking. And August, of course, have, you know, we've been big fans of their work for a long time. And I know Dan personally, I've haven't met um, the speakers tonight, but uh, really enjoyed your presentation. So thank you. All right. Um, okay, just getting my, I'll use this. I've got my water. All right. Um, so I, uh, this is my first thought, the good, bad, the ugly. Wasn't sure what I was gonna talk about. That was vague enough for me to buy me some time to actually put some thoughts together. So I thought we'd start with that. Uh, this was a bit of an in-joke. Chintz, my wife, was supposed to be here. We uh, argue about who the best pet in the family is. I love dogs and she loves cats. And it's cause of some um, kind of arguments in the family. But, you know, I guess it's worthwhile saying that everyone has different preferences. And it's taken me a long time, I think, to sort of learn what, if I'm a cat person or a dog person, I guess, and what kinds of methodologies I like to practice and what kind of uh, people I like to uh, surround myself with and what, what kind of projects I want to be working on and, and um, you know, in part it can come down to whether or not you're uh, one type of person or another. Um, there's no right or wrong. So that was my slide here. Uh, I don't often get to talk about punk rock but I, I really want to say that, you know, I grew up on a skateboard and listening to punk rock and reading Mad Magazine and, you know, like I think that just kind of sculpted a different view of the world and I just kind of always grew up to challenge things and question things and you know not believe anyone and be skeptical about things it's sort of a kind of a thing that I've enjoyed doing all my life I guess so that's the roots of it and punk rock people hate punk rock uh, for whatever reason but for me it's loud it's energetic you don't have to be great at it you can be a terrible musician but you just make some noise and it's the energy that strikes me it's not the musicianship um, and that's what I love about punk rock some of the best you know bands in the world um, it doesn't matter if you've got a beautiful loud punk stereo or a shitty transistor radio it's still going to sound the same so there's that benefit as well you don't have to have expensive audio equipment um, so I, I'm, I'm going to touch on a few things and I'm trying to read the room and work out who's interested in what but I am going to generally talk about design sprints and our experience of it but it's worthwhile saying that um, I have been around a while <laughs> and <clears throat> worked in a lot of places, but most recently worked for a really big agency um, uh, with Marty here, who um, I'm blessed to work with at the moment um, uh, at, at Mass. And th this sort of big agency, uh, I really, I just want to sort of explain where I came from. It was a was it became quite restrictive for me. We grew from about you know, 20 people to about 150 and there were offices all around the world. And um, I, I felt really important at times, you know, I was this great creative director, but I really felt inside really quite kind of um, uh, out of control, not really uh, associated with the work at all. And in fact, I just wanted to talk to clients, but there was this whole rigmarole and we had to book a meeting and someone had to be there and I'd turn up and there'd be 20 people and half the people were people I didn't know and they even worked for us in the agency. So it got really complicated really, really quickly. Um, and I also, yeah, so it was a full service agency. We sort of did all the development as well and we had a client um, account service and all the rest of it. And we kind of did everything. Um, I, I was initially brought on to really, um, it was really about information architecture was the term um, many years ago that, that was being used. And I was there because I had some experience having worked at DT. Um, so I was there to try and help them improve their practices there. But it very quickly became a little bit of advertising. Then we were talking about customer experience and then a bit of product, but really it was kind of big site core projects and blah, blah, blah. Talked about the hierarchy, talked about the suits, and there was a lot of waterfall stuff. So. 
Um, you know, you all know the drill. The, the, the basic deal was as an agency, you'd kind of go, oh my God, we've just got OzPost come in the door. How much do you think they've got? Oh, I reckon we can probably squeeze about 150 grand out of them. Okay, shit, what, what does that look like? Whoever was writing the proposal really didn't have much of an idea, a vague idea about how the project should run. Um, that's all cool. Come back, pop the champagne, we've won the job. First meeting with the project managers. Oh, you know the risks involved in this project. Oh, oh, oh that's not going to be enough time to do that. We're going to have to lock this shit down straight away. So any changes that you get, we're going to have to treat as a change request and we're going to negotiate the hell out of it over the next three months. What a great way of starting a big project together. So that's sort of the background and things were changing um, towards the end, but that, that was sort of my background. So I really wanted to start my own business, always wanted to, and um, I really felt the timing was right. Um, started a business, wanted to focus on design only. We don't have any developers, we don't have any, anyone else. I really wanted to do digital design to make it even harder for myself wanted to really concentrate on products, wanted to get really cool experienced people like these guys down here, Scott and Marty. Um, I didn't want to hire any suits and I hope that I, I apologize if there are suits in the room and that's offensive. It's, you know, there's a lid for every pot and blah, blah, blah. Um, we're not that pot though. Um, we're not that interested in having that kind of cushion around us. We want, we want to be able to have really direct relationships with clients and really nut out the problem together. And, and we can use our own kind of methodologies and use Slack and daily stand-ups and showcases and all that kind of stuff to overcome any of that um, work that ordinarily would be done by a project manager. Um, I guess we're also sort of talking partly about Agile as well. We, sure, we do hybrid stuff and even some waterfall projects, but by the nature of doing product work, um, by the nature of not having development team ourselves, we're normally picking up clients who have a big engineering team anyway, have their own cycles. We need to sort of fit in with them. So it's, it's a really common language that we can share and work, work together. So it really means that, you know, um, uh, self-organizing teams much, much more uh, effective than um, a traditional sort of structure of a, you know, an agency. And the other thing is family. Got to be honest, I've got two beautiful kids. I want to be able to race home and, and go to their sports day. And I want them to be able to come in on a Friday and skate around the studio and all that kind of stuff. So in a way, I'm kind of trying to design my life as well. So that's <clears throat> quite a rant really, wasn't it? Um, okay. Ugh. Uh, a couple of things. Got a new studio and that in itself is an interesting thing. On the left is the before, and I look back at these photos and I think, oh my God, what was I even thinking? Um, and on the right is how it looks now. Thankfully, we've, on a, on a shoestring budget, managed to at least kind of get it to look like a semi-professional studio. So, um, so that was a, a great project, but, you know, uh, it's still pretty rough. There's dust and you know all the rest of it but the doors open and you can just walk in and out and have the breeze come in sometimes birds fly in and scare the hell out of us so um that's kind of our thing it's important to us the surroundings and i won't <clears throat> talk i won't show you all the projects that we've ever done or whatever but this is just a bit of a cross section and it it is a <clears throat> i find it hard to define i think we're digital designers and we focus on products so that's kind of it but Half the time we're doing a bit of brand stuff, a bit, of, a bit of the time we're doing sort of more and more communication stuff. We do a lot of kind of, uh, we do websites and some really big ones, some little ones, but a lot of it is on <coughs> um, actual apps that people are using. And some of the projects that um, require real uh, complicated thought and detail oriented, which is just our bag. We're, we're not, we don't enter awards. We're not interested in any of the glamorous stuff. We want to solve problems and make stuff that people really want to use. So that's a bit about us. <clears throat> Ooh, okay. So um, I want to just uh, iterate my kind of language around this topic because um, I'm not even sure it's right, but <laughs> it might be different to your, to everyone else's uh, language in the room. There's this term design thinking, and I think everyone sort of here um, knows that to mean that five, six, seven step process where you're starting with trying to define the problem and then you're narrowing down and you're diverg you know, com diverging, converging, choosing, you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you've seen all those diagrams. 
that's loosely what we all do. That's loosely what we all were trained to do very naturally as designers um, without even really thinking about it. It was only fairly recently that that terms have become a thing. Then there's um, Google Ventures Design Sprints, which we have some experience in and we're, we're about to launch, actually someone was freaking me out earlier. We're about to do three in a row week after week. And I'm thinking just now that that's <laughs> gonna be a pretty exhausting three weeks. That starts in two weeks and we haven't recruited people either, whoever asked that question. So that'll be a last minute thing as well. Um, and then, yeah, there's all this agile stuff, but there's a whole bunch of things in between. We do different kind of styles and we just get in there and have a crack at something. You could call it a five day sprint because it lasted five days and we had something tested. So there's a few different variations of it, but I'll try and use those terms consistently. Um, and, you know, we haven't said it yet, but this is the, the joke. You know, this is the design process. Um, we all stayed up late at night, the very last minute, you know, the, the month leading up to that, when we had the brief, we didn't do anything about it. We we're out ha hanging out and having a beer at the pub and watching TV and all the rest of it. And then it's dawned on us that we've got this assignment to, we stay up all late, um, freak out, tears, tantrums, stomping around the room, somehow get it done. And, you know, we, we get through to the next project. And the, and the dangerous thing is that that's effectively perpetuating that, that kind of concept of that actually being okay. And then on the right, you know, the new reality, I've got this um, term that I heard recently, IP is the, uh, speed is the new, the new IP. Whatever idea you can possibly think of, it's been done a million times. The only difference between what you can do and what someone else can do is if you can get it out in the public quicker than anyone else. So this is why this sort of design sprint stuff is so brilliant because you can circumvent the build and launch. You can have an idea, test it, learn it, get back, do it again, you know, within five days. Um, and that's a really, 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 really powerful thing. So that's why ultimately, you know, I'm going to tell, say, I'm going to say a lot of negative things about it or pose a lot of questions, but ultimately that, that's why I love this, this kind of work. Um, but back on this concept of the, the old joke versus the new reality, um, uh, th there is a, uh, there's a HBR um, uh, review uh, piece on this very thing, which is this idea that that assignment that you spent at the very last minute staying up to kind of do, and then you um, somehow got it done and delivered it and you got an A plus and you went, that's where it all starts and that's where, um, that, that can be quite problematic. I'm sure you, can, you guys can relate to what I'm saying here, but you know, I really enjoy drawing. This is how it all started for me. I used to draw and I used to just love stuff and try and you know, draw, you know, draw, 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 and um, I thought I was okay at it. And a lot of people you know, in high school, at least, in my very tiny little lunchbox would say, hey man, you're really good at that. That's gonna make me feel like I am really good at it over and over and over again. Um, and it is in my, the back of my mind basically developing this concept that, that I'm the only one who can do this. How that translates into your profession is that you're sitting there, people coming in wanting to help and you're like, can't talk, can't talk, genius at work, can't talk, you know, and, and, and there will be moments in your careers if they haven't happened already, they've certainly happened to me, where you're sitting at this monitor, it's three in the morning and you're going, it's just dawned on you, you're the only person in the world that can get you out of this and you've got, you, you've got to be at work at nine, you know, you know, the next day. It's a really, it's a lot of pressure for people and it's a really unfair thing and it's quite a damaging thing and you can burn out and all the rest of it. For businesses um, and just for your own health, personally, I think believe in the process don't think of yourself as a genius. You may well be a genius, but embrace the process. And, and that what is good for you is good for, for clients and for business and for, your, you know, for the people around you because it makes for a much more pleasant person, much more expected results. You're much more collaborative. And you know, again, that's why I think um, this kind of work is really, really important. So that one, and see what I did typographically? Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, so I'll show you, uh, one really brief, I really want to talk tangible stuff here as well because I can hear myself think, uh, talk and go, what is he even saying? I want to show you an example and uh, do excuse me because I can't and I'll have to refrain from using specifics because this is a product that hasn't gone live yet. But 
basically the concept is the complexity around the order in which you do things and how that translates to an interface. And put simply, it's left, right, or right, left, right. Uh, it's not very simple at all, but it'll, it'll make sense. So what I wanna describe is uh, this company that we um, do work for is really, really interesting. And I think it's probably the only opportunity that we'll ever get like this uh, in Australia. They, uh, the, the, the two guys that own this business are really kind of um, a really successful, rich, but kind of, they think up here, they don't quite have the language to talk, you know, help anyone understand what they're trying to do. And I've I inherited this position in between where I'm trying to translate what they're saying. That's what it's been like from the beginning when we, I don't know, Scott, if you remember, but when we first started working together, we were just doing an interface. We're kind of going, oh my God, how good is this? We're getting paid for this. I don't know, just bust out another screen. I don't know really what it does. We're just kind of busting along. And then we're going back to the client and then we're kind of going, oh, what, what are you, what is this? You know, oh, that's either good or I don't like it. And we, we wouldn't have much of a um, crutch to lean on. Crutch or crutch? Crutch to lean on. <laughs> Um, and so we went through, and you know, we, I was really grateful for the work and it was frustrating and, and I could tell they were, they were also building up their design team as well, which was great. Um, and we, um, where am I going with this? We, we, I, I, I just felt like it, the relationship deteriorated at one point on a Friday night at five o'clock, they called us and said, need this Monday. I just need you to do it. And I just went, it's too much. You can, well, I won't tell you what I was going to say, but um, we're not going to do it. We can't do it. Uh, this isn't how you do good work. There's something wrong here. It's very broken. And then we kind of had a little quiet time. I did talk to the client for a little while. We came back in the new year and um, a couple of really interesting things happened. One was um, they they were developing their team and their team, were, they, they had experience um, in design sprints and they'd come from a product background. So I, um, and then I was rethinking it as well. And I just said, look, you've got to commit to us or we're not working with you anymore. You got to pay up front for, well, you, I'm sorry, you know, you got to pay for a retainer so we can do work together. We've got to do a proper planning session so we know what the hell you want from us. And thankfully he went, okay, that, that sounds sensible. Let's do that. Um, so in the background, what they were doing, they were, like I said, developing their product team. They had a product owner and they had um, as designers. I actually um, placed it, like I referred someone and helped them build that design team. Um, and they were doing their own design sprints. Now, what was happening, this is quite a complicated thought, I if I could get this out. But um, so they were doing these design sprints. And what they were doing is they were going in very, very close and going, okay, we've got this problem where someone needs to search for um, something and they need to see a bit of detail. Uh, okay, we'll do this. Oh, we'll build it into a prototype. That looks great. Then test it. Awesome. The prototype went really well. Then the next week they go over here and go, you know, what we need here is we need a way to do this graph and you, but you need to be able to switch the graph, but on mobile it's going to do this. Okay, we'll do it like that. And, and that, that worked really well and tested really well. I went on and on and on to the point that there were um, three, four, five, six, seven sort of prototypes all doing slightly different things, all rolling up to one kind of experience. But um, we were looking at them. That's about when they said, now I know why they agreed to all of this because they, they dumped all this stuff on our desk and said, oh, we don't quite know what to do now. <laughs> it's just not making sense. And to try and simplify the um, design problem as best I can, um, I've got on the left here, your, your first kind of task is on, on the left, as represented in the figure A, and then you choose something and you would expect it to appear on the right. But not everyone thinks like that. They might want to find B first and then go to A. But while let's say A is a conversation and you've got to find this bit of reference material, and then that bit, bit of reference material actually leads to three other things of which 10 other people are involved in. And then those 10 other people are having separate conversations and then those separate conversations, little, 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 little. There's no way you're ever, ever, ever in a lifetime ever going to be able to agree on the order that most people will follow that um, sequence it, 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 because people never follow the sequence in the same kind of way. So when they were 
um, prototyping the one on the left in their design sprint and getting a success um, that was fine and then they were doing the same on the right, then they were trying to mash them up, then they had a big problem. So, um, getting to a point. <laughs> uh, uh, stuff on a screen, some index cards. This is relatively interesting, I guess. Up here you've got how we've broken down. We've just tried to step back and go, well, okay, well, there's a menu thing that we need to do. There's kind of spaces of some kind. There's, okay, we need to do notifications. They're gonna be, you know, throughout the interface. And then there's some actionable stuff over here. And, you know, just to try and start breaking down the definition of each of these things. So they were not even using the same language from one day to the next. And then we're just trying to sketch out individually how we might kind of solve the problem. That was going on and on and on. And then we kind of had a bit of a brainwave. And I guess what we came up with, and it looks completely obvious, right? Anyone can do that. Of course, it's columns, you move them around left to right. You can design the interface however you like. Let the user decide. Well, believe me, <laughs> they couldn't from their design sprint kind of process. Um, and to, to be honest with you, it took us a bit of time to work that one out too. Um, so, the, the, what, you're gonna, what you're seeing here is very obviously no detail because I can't tell you what it is or whatever. But what I do want to sort of stress is that um, sometimes you need to step back. Sometimes you need to have a over, like a really big over, bird's eye helicopter view of stuff to try and solve problems. And it's not necessarily kind of right up in your grill. You, you, sometimes you're so far in the weeds you can't see any of it. And I think. Um, our role as mass, because we're, we're, uh, um, you know, we're dispensable, we're a design agency, you know, we can, um, we constantly have to prove our value every single day or we won't get work. Our role as designers is to rise above, have that independent view, actually point out some obvious things, ask some dumb questions and pose some kind of dangerous thoughts. So that's, that's, um, not strictly out of a design sprint process that you might achieve that. But you could argue from here, you would turn that into a design sprint and all the rest of it. So please um, challenge anything I'm saying. Um, and just, I guess, a fun little, um, someone mentioned principle before. Man, there's a whole bunch of software you should be thinking about using principles. One, Figma is a great, that kind of um, changed our, or my, that rocked my world a little bit. But you anyway, know, you can see how the interface might pan out on mobile, pretty complicated interaction. This is something that people are using every single day to help them do their job. So that's that. I'm gonna have a sip of water. How am I going so far? Any feedback? Oh, A plus, thank you. Okay, um, Marty here did a presentation earlier today and I thought I'd rip out a couple of his slides and claim them as my own. He had a really good thought. I'm allowed to do that, right? Because I'm, I'm the creative director. <laughs> um, he had a really great, really great um, thought. Um, and his comment was that he went to, uh, do you want to tell the story, Marty? Yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, it's, yeah I'll let you tell the story. Okay. I'll just try and rehash my speech from this morning. Um, yeah, really quickly, just a quick anecdote. Um, I got two coffees, one last Friday and then on Saturday. Um, and essentially, in my view, they're basically the same cafe. Pretty trendy sign, um, really nice name. Um, Tim, if you want to go to the next slide, I think the interiors are really great as well. Um, really nice to sit in. Um, foods, food's really good as well. Tim, next slide. No, that's all right. Um, and all this type of photography looking good so far. Instagram pages look identical. Um, again, we've been seeing a bit of a trend here. Um, uh, next one. But I guess for me, <coughs> what separates the two, and I think there's been a lot of stories written about, about this. <laughs> Ooh, lady. It's good. Um, was I guess the, the interaction I had with, with two of the baristas and the guy on the right who is the actual guy um, who I had the encounter with, he, I've been in a few times and every time I've been in, he makes an effort to, when he's handing my coffee, to look you in the eye and sort of 
wish you a good day and all that. And, and he does that and it's, it's quite obvious, but um, I thought it was just kind of a weird character thing at the start. I, but then I talked to you and you said, echoed the same thing. Um, in contrast, on the left, it was a busy Saturday morning, um, but you know, um, there was still space around in the cafe, but uh, so the, the baristas had made my coffee <coughs> and um, they had made it ready, caught out my name and they didn't even look up. They sort of looked down, um, had to reach over, basically go into the kitchen to grab them um, and there was no acknowledgement at all. And I probably wouldn't have blinked an eye had I not had the experience before. And I'm not sure if it'll make me not go to Moby again, but just always important to think um, that it's the, the very small, minute interactions, whether that be <coughs> online or, or physical in this case, that um, sort of makes all the difference. I'm gonna to throw to you next, Scott, and then Alex. Um, Actually, I took, your, I took your example out at the last minute, so apologies. Um, so I, I, what I took out of that story is you know, we're all doing the same stuff, so um, it's not down to how good your coffee is. Uh, let's not make any mistake about it. It's how human the experience is, what that extra little thing is, and in this case, it's a barista, but we need to explore how that might present in an interface or a brand or... Um, you know, uh, an interaction. Um, and I do, if uh, anyone who's in my era, <laughs> um, you'll be familiar with Jacob Nielsen, who for many years was the bane of my existence because every client would truck out his heuristic kind of things and go, well, don't you know, links should be blue. And it was sort of an interesting idea and it's sort of familiar with, a, a reminiscent of a lot of universal concepts about language and typography and all the rest of it. But his idea was that, Every user coming to your website um, has an expectation because they've seen a whole bunch of other users. So you know what? Your website should be exactly the same as everyone else's website. So for me, a young designer going, I want to do something interesting and what's the point of life if everything's the same? Um, I've really struggled with that for many years. Thankfully, I haven't heard anyone mention Jacob Nielsen in ages, you know, touch wood. Um, but this... Uh, the story of this Herman Miller chair, um, the Aaron chair, which we have in our studio, is a really interesting one too for different reasons because this was designed by um, a guy called Stumpf and Chantry um, were the two designers and they, they did the right thing. So first of all, they basically practiced design thinking. They designed this chair, um, which looked much like that, um, a little bit different, much like that. And then they went, okay, yeah, we prototyped it. It looks spot on. We want to um, present it to users and get some feedback as uh, you know, you, you should do. Um, they, they did a user session. The comments were all, you know what, come back when it's upholstered and we'll have another look, but it doesn't look finished. And you know what they did? They went, we're going to do it anyway. And now this is one of the biggest icons. It's in the Museum of Modern Art. This chair has been hugely successful. Um, there, there were, at the time when it came out, there was this thing where office chairs were just being littered on the street because this came out and everyone wanted to buy these. So they were throwing out their old office chairs. So I think I often think about that because, uh, yeah, you can get data and you can really um, respond to it and go, yeah, that's what the user said. We should do that. But um, but designers, you, you got to have that, that balance um, between usable and lovable. And I'm sure you're familiar with MVP versus MLP, which I think was a phrase that the Thirst, if you guys know them, mentioned at a thing. I thought that was a nice way of saying it. Minimum lovable product is something that um, often inevitably comes back a lot. Or maybe it's both. If you're familiar with Dita Rams, the beauty of it is in the clarity of thought and its function and all the rest of it. Um, but would you have a house full of Dita Rams objects? It's not for everyone. I would love to, perhaps not for everyone. Um, and I'm almost finished, so thanks for bearing with me. Um, there's just a couple of little points. I want to kind of challenge this concept of, uh, I want to challenge everything because I'm like a punk rocker and stuff. So uh, design thinking can solve any problem is usually what um, is tough, you know, what is described when we talk about design thinking. Any problem, you come in here, we'll solve it, you know, um, whatever the tax department, we'll, we'll sort it out. Um, you know, poverty, no worries, five day sprint, we've got it covered. Um, and there's a bit of dangerous language around that. Uh, there's a lot of um, 
you know, th there's this feeling, and rightly so, there's this feeling that if you do a five-day sprint, you will be a design expert and you'll be able to do this stuff all the time. Um, and, and then there's this lady here on the right who says design thinking is bullshit. Pardon my French. Um, but her name is uh, Natasha Zen. Did I get that right? Jen? Thank you. Natasha Jen. And she's from a company called Pentagram, um, which perhaps you're familiar with, but it's an internationally renowned brand agency. You might be familiar with Paula Scher. Um, and she's done a great little uh, piece uh, about talking about um, design thinking. Now, she, uh, I'm, I'm going to not do it justice, but she basically, is, all she's saying is, let look, design thinking is great. We've, we've been doing it for a long time, um, but let's just not over, um, let's just, be, let's just be critical about what we're saying and let's actually own the words around this and let's just be mindful of what we think design thinking really is and let's hold design thinking to account as well. So she gave a couple of examples. Charles and Ray Eames, if anyone is familiar with Charles and Ray Eames, I named my son, my, his second name is Eames. Did you guys know that? Okay, so I know I may regret that one day, but... Um, they, you look at photos, photos of their studio, they're not, they were pre-sticky note and they still got by okay. You know, they designed some of the most beautiful chairs in the world. Um, so we've been, as designers, we, we, we've been doing this fairly naturally. Uh, the architectural industry has adopted that term and introduced that and now business is, uh, you know, there's this term, design is so, you know, design is so important it's too important to leave to the designers. I don't know if you're familiar with that term. But um, Natasha is basically saying, let's just be critical. Uh, she gave an example of an R uh, MRI thing for children, which is this, you know, you can imagine those, you know, you've got the big donut shape, you lie down and you get pushed into this MRI. horrifying experience for an adult, let alone a child. Um, so the example she gave of design thinking was an MRI for kids. What did they do? They painted some unicorns on it. And that's design thinking. So um, all she's saying, she's not saying it's um, really bad, but what she is saying is let's just challenge the idea and let's talk about it and let's be critical and let's also own it as a sort of design industry as well. What else have I got here? Uh, I want to put this in because I thought we did a good job of the animation. <laughs> but we are doing a design sprint for Swinburne. We've launched it today. So we've, we're teaming with our, um, our, one of our clients, NetWealth, to do a design sprint. So I get to corrupt a whole bunch of Swinburne students and, and tell them all the pros and cons of, um, of design thinking. So, you know, we mean, we mean this. We, you know, we, we are invested in this type of work and all the rest of it, but um, we're also critical, critical about Constantly thinking. These, these um, diagrams that people are putting up about their process, I'm sort of thinking here going, shit, what is our process? We don't have a process. Every job comes in, we go, what is the best thing we can do for that person? You know? And we will never say no to a job. Regard, you know, if it's a $1,000 job, we'll still try and make something happen. Um, and and that's, that, that's just this sort of, we've only been in it for three years. We just, we've got to fight. We've got to earn our earn our paycheck, you know, we're, we're not the, the big dogs, we're the, we're the underdogs, so, um, oh, ranting again, sorry. Uh, here is where I was going to really give a good summary, but I think a lot of it's been said. There's been some really good <laughs> things people say, all the best bits of um, the good parts of this, brings teams together, gets people to, this is the best time to be a designer. Let me tell you, people know what design is. You know, you can go into a boardroom and say, I'm a designer and they'll kind of go, oh, interesting. Yep. Okay, good. You know, what strategies have you employed? They recognize how design can be used um, as a strategic um, part of their, of their business. This, uh, believe me, this is the best time to be a designer. Doing these sprints allows you to, in a very safe, quick friendly, exciting way, get, get clients in who may otherwise be really not enjoying the job that much, get them into your studio, throw, you know, paper around and have fun. And it's, you know, it's the highlight of their, of their day, you know, working with us. And, you know, that's uh, quite different to, to what, what it might have been like 50 years ago for, um, for designers. Uh, the bad, well, there isn't a lot of bad. I, would, I will always continue to try and be um, doing this kind of work. 
but there are perhaps some cautions, um, like I've sort of stated. So it's all about being being critical. And um, thank you for listening. Uh, I hope I didn't swear too much. Please give me some questions. Tim, if I change my first name to Eames, would you adopt me as your son? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. Let's chat afterwards. Uh, all right. Um, that was so good. Uh, Thanks, I'm sure man. there'll be lots of questions uh, Hello. after that. Hey, um, just a question about the cafe that you uh, showed on the, on the uh, screen there. Uh, did you actually talk to them about the customer experience? Did you interview them around? Uh, do they plan how they interact with their customers? I, well, Marty, you didn't, did you? Um, I actually meant to today because I went in there and I tried to get them to deliver a whole bunch of coffee for us, but I didn't. The thing is, I assumed that the, that guy, Jack, Jack at Bentwood, if you ever go in there, was the business owner. And I stopped myself and th thought, why did I think that? Um, because it, it may just be a really great cultural part of their business. So great question. No, I didn't, but I will. <laughs> Anyone else? They're afraid to ask anything. So about those blue links, no, I'm just <laughs> I've, I did forget to say we're, we're also hiring, so if you are interested in design, <laughs> that's actually the theme, but it's also true. don't have a process that continually is like repeatable how do you know or how do you assess like what you should continue on and how, what you should change yeah um great question and i realize i've even been contradicting myself we we sort of do have the basics there you know we need to work out what we're trying to solve and learn about the user and kind of explore we do territories often and try and work through that way so there are some um wasn't quite true. We, we have some fallback things that we do every single time. But what I was trying to say was, um, you know, like w we try and measure our process um, to, to the right client. And not everyone has a huge budget to do a whole bunch of research. And, you know, for them, it, you know, it's just some surveys or a couple of calls might be helpful. Um, you know, or, you know, or we might need to do a really a much richer sort of customer experience sort of piece of work. So um, generally the right kind of flow, but uh, I think what I've been bucking against as a professional myself is back at the big agency. And I don't know if you've guessed where it was, but um, at, at that other experience I had, um, it got to the point where we couldn't really even like a, uh, a lead had come in and we'd kind of go, you know, we can't do it if you haven't got a hundred grand or whatever. And it was really soul destroying for me. And that was because we tried to apply the same process every single time and it just got old. Um, yeah. And not effective. Hi. Hi. I have a question about your, in terms of, so the theme of this meetup, right, is DevOps. It's bringing together the Design relationship. Ops. Oh, Des shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Design ops. Design ops. Um, and you say that your studio is a design studio. So I'm just, and you don't have developers, so I'm just curious in terms of your design sprints. Who you involve? Who are involved in your design sprints? Um, yeah, great, great question, and it differs in, in short. Um, so we're about to do th those three sprints back to back. Um, we're gonna we're we're gonna have a much smaller team. Google Ventures uh, sprints are typically five to seven people um, per team. In our case, it'll be more like three or four. So a couple from there, uh, you know couple from our client, the client side, um, and us working together. Uh, that particular sprint won't be the devs, um, which is which is okay because they can kind of almost build anything we we design in their in their case. But um, the example I showed 
earlier with the left, right, right, left, left, right thing. Um, that was very much with a full, proper, fully featured represent representation from, you know, um, marketing, product owner, dev, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, and that's, I think, probably the ideal. Um, yeah, so we, we, again, we kind of mix it up a little bit and do whatever we can. Oh, Dan, don't ask me a hard question. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of picking up on what you're saying where you had the repeatable processes, but you adapt it to the project is what I, I understood you to say. Um, how much do you involve your clients in developing the process that you want to apply to their project? That That is another super question. Great question, um, and I feel more qualified than ever to be able to answer that um, because it was different. But I'll be deferring to someone else. Uh, but it, it's different to what what it was like to be a creative director for a big agency because really I was I, I was being trucked out for a pitch and I'd talk about creative stuff and that that was my job. Um, but I wasn't having the really early 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 conversation. So the question came up to I apologise if I don't answer your question. We'll come back, but question came up about, um, oh, does anyone ever come to you and ask for design sprints? I think that's another fantastic question. I was thinking, man, I don't think anyone does, but the difference for me personally is um, we don't need a lot of work to be really, really busy. Um, and we, we've been getting a lot of work through. We don't advertise, we don't even really have a website. We don't, no one knows who we are. We just get referrals because we work bloody hard. But every conversation that I have with a client, I, I'm kind of, it's almost a meeting of the mind straight away. And we're almost sussing each other out. And typically I'll, I'll kind of start with, what are you trying to achieve? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I'll just kind of try and listen to what the problem is that they're trying to solve. And then I'll just kind of say, look, if you want us to take you golfing on a Friday, that you're not, we're not those people. Um, if you want a waterfall project, we would strongly, uh, you know, um, recommend against it. What we do is we, we want to get to know each other. We'll do a couple of sprints together. We'll just see how it goes. No big deal. If it doesn't work out, neither of us are, are going to want to keep working together. And, and it's sort of that kind of language, I think, that um, get, gets it, get, like, kind of, because I'm also the you know, designing stuff with these guys and very much like it's we're on the you know, opposite each other. It's very, and I think, to, I think clients respect that. I can kind of go in there and basically say, well, how much money have you got? Okay, well, let's proper, have a proper conversation. Well, what do we want to do about it? How can, how can we work with you? And then if they want to talk about typography, brand and, you know, interaction, I can, you know, um, get through most of those conversations. So, and I think that's what I've found people enjoy and what uh, people enjoy buying from the people who are actually doing the work. Um, and, and for me, that, I mean, that, that's just how we're getting by at the moment. Um, and hopefully it won't change. Um, uh, I, I, did I answer the question so loosely? Yeah. So, <laughs> hit me up later, we'll, we'll chat. <laughs> Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tim.